Hi Weber fans, so today we're going to be checking out the Weber Baby Q rotisserie system. So what we'll do is dive straight into it. Now don't forget everything you use in my video today, there are links in the description below for the best place to get your Weber products, so make sure you check those out at the end of this video. So in today's video we're going to be unboxing that WebAT Q rotisserie system. Now a lot of people have been asking questions about this. There's a lot of people who have got them. I haven't had one originally. I have bought one to see if it's any good and how well it does that chicken. So today we're going to be unboxing this rotisserie, seeing what the design features are on it and if it looks as good as they say it is. So what we'll do is dive straight into it. Right, so here we've got the rotisserie system for the Baby Q. Now today what we're going to be doing is unboxing it, see what you get inside and see how easy it is to fit and assemble on your Baby Q. Now you can get this system for your Weber Q, you can get it for the Family Q, you can get a system for the Genesis and the Weber Kettle, you get it basically across the board of all the Webers. So what I want to know is how easy this is to fit and whether it's worth $150. So what we'll do is dive in and start getting unboxed. So now we've got it unboxed, this is what you actually get. So you get a four watt motor, you get your two prongs that go on the side of your meat, you get your rotisserie shaft, you get a heat shield to fit, that you fit just below the handle on your cube, obviously to keep the heat down so you don't burn your fingers. You get the shroud and this bracket here will screw on the side, so we'll do that in a second. So you will need a Phillips screwdriver and something just to hold the bolts on the back. So with the shroud and everything else, it's stamped country of origin China. So everything's made in China. It's not made in America, it is all made in China. Even on the shaft, we've got the same. Country of origin China on here. So everything's made in China, which, which did surprise me because Weber's mainly American made, but a lot of the products now are made in China. So we'll get this assembled and we'll see how well it fits on the queue. Well, so first up, what we're gonna do is fit our heat shroud. Now this is gonna go in between here. So you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver and just gonna undo the handle and then slot this in between. Just make sure that's nice and tight. So now we've got our heat shroud fitted, just lift the lid and all is the case of opening it up, slotting it in and as we pop it on, you drop it on and these little flanges will slot in there. That one you want to move around so it slots in there and then we just lift that and we're going to slot that in there and slot that in there. All what happens now is our lid lowers down and should rest nice and neatly on there. So that's fitting correctly. Right, so motor, you've got two slots here and that just slides on the back of there. Now what you'll notice in the back is we've got a hole here for our spit roaster to go in. So you slide that in once you've got this connected. Now with your shaft, you've got a small end and a big end. It's the big end that actually goes in the motor. Like so, and that slots on there. Now if you just put a roast on here, you will have these on here as well. And all these are is little wing nut. So you take these off slot this on there first, so you take that out. You say slot this on on there like so. Now you'll have to adjust this wing nut to allow that rod to slide through the middle. And you'd slide that to the position where you're gonna fit your chicken. And then you get your second one. And then all we do is we slide this on here. Like so. And I will demonstrate this in the following video. And then both these shafts slot into your roast. So once your roast is cooked, to get this out, you're gonna need some heat resistant gloves. So when you lift this rod out, it's gonna be very, very hot. So what we'll do now is just switch it on and see how slow she turns. Right, so we're all plugged in now, so just see how slow this actually turns. So you just turn it on at the side of your motor. Right, 
And that is your rotisserie in motion. Right now with your rotisserie, if you don't want to use your rotisserie, it does come apart quite easy. Obviously when you finish using it, make sure it's cold and just take this out. That slides out, your motor lifts off. Just lift out the grill. And you can wash these in the dishwasher, they are stainless steel. And that sits back down, ready to cook as normal. Well, so as you can see, your rotisserie system is pretty easy to fit to your queue. I'm going to go through pros and cons of what I can see so far um, before I actually use it. And then in the next video, we're going to be cooking a roast chicken on the queue with that rotisserie system and see how it actually turns out. Don't forget if you use my video today, there are links in the description below for the best place to get your Weber products. Make sure you check those out at the end of this video. Right, so we'll quickly go through the pros. Now the pros I can see with that is obviously expanding the height of your queue. If you wanted to use that chicken roaster in there, you could probably use the stand-up chicken roaster. It is made of stainless steel and quite easy to clean. And the maximum roast size you can go with that is a six kilogram roast. That's quite a big roast that you could put in there. Now those are the pros, the cons. I think Weber at one could have made it battery powered or 12 volt, which would be a lot easier if you take this camping with you. I think it should come with a bag because there's only three parts to it really. And it'd be nice if they included a bag for that $150 price. So you've got somewhere to store it when it's not in use because you're not gonna always keep it on your queue when you're cooking burgers and things like that. You're gonna take that front plate out, you're gonna take that rotisserie out and that motor out. So it'd be nice to have a bag to keep it in and keep everything sort of separate and safe. And last but not least, that lead, you've only got, it's about a meter, a meter long lead. So if you've got no socket next to where you have your queue outside, you're gonna to have to use an extension lead. You're going to have to have your Weber queue right next to a socket. If you're camping, it would be ideal if it was battery powered. For how long you're gonna be doing that roast, I'm pretty sure they could have done a battery powered version of this with a rechargeable battery. Instead of the 240 volt one, you've got a 12 volt battery powered connection for that. Whether they do that in the future, that's a tip for Weber to do. Again, and those who are new to the channel, if you find you getting value out of this content, then contemplate exchange support by slapping that subscribe button, it's absolutely free. Ding that bell for notifications so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. Give us a big thumbs up and comment down below. I will reply to the comment, and if you like what you comment, I'll put it to the video. So what we'll do is cut to any bloopers, and I'll catch you in the next one. And I've had quite a few people email me and be out.